South Australia could soon become one of the first places in the world to ban political donations in state elections. The announcement from the state government last week has reignited a national debate about how our political parties are funded, what donors want from their donations, and how else we could model the system. In today's podcast, we'll be looking at what the South Australia Premier is proposing, but also how things work in the Political Donation Hall of Fame, otherwise known as the United States. Okay, so today we are talking about political donations. It's a sad day for Zara not to be here because she... I know, this is a <laughs> hot topic. Yes, this is her bread and butter. But Sam, first, what are political donations? So political donations exist across all states and territories in Australia. It exists pretty much in every country in the world. And it's this idea that individuals, organisations, charities, family trusts or religions, pretty much any institution with a bank account can donate money to a political party or election campaigns or often multiple. And most large political donors are corporations. So we're talking here about lobbying bodies, consulting firms, banks, mining and energy companies. And it's not just that they can donate. It's not just that they put the money in the pot. The political parties actually rely on these donations for things like advertising, social media spending, holding big events and travel, especially during a campaign. And so what did South Australia announce last week? So the South Australian Premier, his name is Peter Malinowskis, he announced he wants to change the whole way that political donations works in the state with a new law that would ban political donations in state elections. Full stop. That's huge news. It's massive and it's a really bold move. I mean, Malinowskis has been pretty clear he wants to eliminate this perception of undue influence in politics. So as I was saying before about these big corporations giving money, the perception from the public is that that can influence the way decisions are made in politics. And so Malinowskis says that he's on this mission to rebuild trust and integrity in the political system. And that there's a pretty fair reason why we don't trust politicians or political institutions. He said that large donations can lead to political decisions being made in favour of big donors rather than the public. And Malinowskis is not wrong that there is this perception around politics, especially in Australia. What is in this draft legislation exactly? So it's not short on detail. There's a lot in this draft legislation, but essentially it proposes a ban on all electoral donations with some strict penalties if you are found in breach of that. So we're talking here about 10 years in prison or fines of up to 50k. Parties rely on that money, though, as you said before. So how would they get the funds for their campaigns and all the other areas that they need money for if political donations were taken away? So there's this model being proposed in the legislation that would replace the private donations. And what's being suggested by Malinowskis is the idea of public funding for political parties, which is a fascinating idea. So under this model, parties would get a one-off payment that would be capped at $700,000, or $47,000 for every current MP they have in South Australian Parliament, whichever is the lesser of those two amounts. And that pot of money from the public would fund their state level election campaign. So basically moving to a taxpayer funded election campaign rather than a publicly funded one. Exactly. And a really standardised system that's kind of then a proportionate amount of money to the size of the party almost. That's a massive change. And I know we're going to get to the US, but over there, there's this whole angle of the implied right of political expression. Mm. Can you give me a sense of how that will work here? Well, I actually think it could be a hurdle for Malinowskis, and he'll have to encounter this question at some point. Will the restriction on political donations mean that free speech is affected? And the High Court of Australia has previously ruled against spending limits for election campaigns. This is not a new idea in Australia because they found that limits might breach the implied political expression that we are given a right to in the Australian Constitution. Not directly, but it's implied, which means it's kind of presumed. Uh, And that is the right to be able to say what you want in the political sphere in a society. So Australia doesn't have a Bill of Rights or any core document that spells that out explicitly, but it's been tested a number of times in the High Court and they've recognised over and over again this idea of political expression as an essential item in a democracy. So the challenge for the court, and I guess now for Malinowskis, is he has to try and convince the public and the court system that the government's core interest in preventing corruption and ensuring a fair election actually outweighs the idea that you could stifle political expression. 
Hello, I'm James and I produce the video you're watching. If you're enjoying what you're watching, we'd love it if you considered subscribing and checking us out on our other platforms. It'd really help in getting the word out about what we're doing here at TDA. Thanks very much. And now back to the deep dive. You were a lawyer in your past life. As a retired lawyer, yeah. what is your very professional opinion on whether you think this law could actually survive a legal challenge? I didn't encounter any high court cases to do with <laughs> political expression in my esteemed career of just under two years. Um, it's hard to say for sure. I don't really know what the court's going to rule, but I think the court's going to have a tough time balancing out those two factors. It's really up to the government, the South Australian government, to show that this ban is necessary to tackle a significant issue of trust in politics. And if they can do that, there is a chance that it will be upheld. But it's definitely not going to be without challenge, especially from parties that rely on these donations. We've spoken a lot about the fact that this is directed towards big, major political mm. parties. Yeah. What about how it will affect the minor parties and also independent candidates? Well, independent candidates are now a firm part of our political landscape. I mean, this is a different conversation than we were having 20 years ago. They play a big role. And so in this model, independents would still be allowed to raise money from private donations, but those donations would be capped at $2,700 per donation. Then there'd also be a $15,000 publicly funded payment. And that ensures that there can still be some competition without the backing of an established political party. Um, and that idea there is to level out the playing field a bit. I couldn't actually see anything in the legislation about repeat 2,700 donations. So my mind immediately went to, well, can you just give $2,700 <laughs> 10 times? That wasn't addressed in the legislation. It's going to come up at some point because that's a way, a way around it. Just to be clear, though, the legislation is saying that if you are an independent candidate, you can receive a limited amount of political donations. Yeah. But if you're a major political party, you can't. Exactly. So independent candidates can still go and raise money at the markets or, you know, do something in their community and accept donations up to that limit. It's different rules for major parties. How have people responded to this? So the reactions in South Australian politics have been mixed. The Greens upper house MP Robert Sims is on board with the reform. He says that the Greens have always pushed against the influence of donations on a democracy. But he also wants to really make sure that smaller parties and independents aren't disadvantaged because he says their diversity is crucial for a good democracy. The coalition hasn't made its stance public yet and we didn't get a response from them when we reached out. Just quickly, this draft law is now open for public consultation. Yeah, but, so anyone can have their say. Yeah, but after that's done, what will happen next? Well, Malinowskis and his Labor government have a majority in the lower house, so it'll likely get through there. And then they get to the upper house. That could be a little trickier. They'll need some extra support. They'll need backing from the two Greens and at least one other minority party or independent. OK, let's go a little bit further. I feel like we've teased that we were going to speak about the US a few times, but it is over there a major thing. Can you just explain how political donations work in the US? It makes Australia's political donation system look really simple, essentially. I mean, this is a really complicated system, and I think trust issues in the US stem from how complicated it is. But to give you a really quick sense of how it works, there's kind of three levels of political donations in the US. There's individuals who can give as much as they want. There's something called a PAC, which is a political action committee, and that's a group of individuals or a group of companies or a group of organisations. And then there's a super PAC, which is a group of PACs. Mm -hmm. And the super PACs is where things really get interesting because here we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. But the really important thing with super PACs, which is where kind of the beating heart of the political donation system in the US is, is that super PACs cannot be directly tied to a campaign. So it's different to Australia where the Australian Labor Party might be raising millions and millions of dollars for their campaign. Super PACs can do their own advertising, their own events, they can do whatever they want. They can't work directly with the campaign, which is where things get a bit dodgy. So just to be clear, it's not a straightforward political donation to a big major party. And I presume that Joe Biden has a similar big super PAC working on behalf of him? Multiples. And, you know, things get really messy and super PACs can donate money to other super PACs. I mean, it just goes crazy. It is such a big part of how these US election campaigns play out. Yeah. I presume we're not going to see a similar law to what we're seeing in South Australia in the US. Oh my gosh. I mean, the power that these super PACs have over any campaign a Democrat or Republican who's going to be the next president means that that's there to stay. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Daily Oz. We will be back again tomorrow.